So I just wanted to show you another example of you working with the glossary converter. And to do this, I'm going to use a slightly more complicated spreadsheet than the ones I've done in previous examples. So this one contains more fields. So I have a client field with the name of different clients, a media field. The media field just refers to an image. And that image is inside a folder that has the same name as the spreadsheet, but with media underscore written in front of it. So they're in the same folder. And here's, these are, so here's all my images. And I can just flip through my images like that. So I've just referenced those names, whoops, in here. This is just the format the glossary converter is looking for. So then I have an English term, part of speech, which grammar, grammar is being used, a definition of the term, an example of how it's used, how it's pronounced, if that helps you to pronounce it, doesn't help me, the status, whether it's approved or non-approved, then I have some Welsh, some German, some French, some Spanish, some Italian, some Danish, some Swedish, some Russian, and that's it. I've used machine translation for most of these translations, although the German and the Russian is good. That's been done for me by two kind souls who went through and corrected it all. And so if anybody would like to have a go at the rest of them, feel free and I'll be happy to take the corrected text. So I'll close that, I'll come back to here again. And what I've got here now is my spreadsheet. So I'm going to start up the glossary converter. That starts up looks like this. In my settings, just so you can see, I've got this box not ticked. So anything I drag in here is going to be converted to a multi-term term base. So I'll click OK there. And I just drag the spreadsheet like that and drop it in. This will recognize the headings and all of the columns. Now, because I've done this before, I haven't got to enter them again because it remembers the settings of previous things that you've done. But if I hadn't done them, I could define what each of these are. The languages will probably be recognized, but the other things could be absolutely anything. And so the glossary converter won't necessarily know what they are. So you have to define them. And you do that by right clicking, choosing the type of field you want it to be and click OK. So that was a text. That was a media. Pick lists are a little different. So here, for example, if I right click, you then click again to edit the values and you just enter the values in the pick list. And this means that when somebody is using multi-term, it's not free text. They can select from a number of items in a list, which gives you some consistency within your term base. So it's dead simple, really, but then you just click on OK. So because I've done that, in reality, I would have just dragged it in and clicked on OK. And that's it. It's done. And if I now look in my same folder, I now have my multi-term term base and I have all the index fields that have been created with that. When I open it up in multi-term, it looks like this. So very nice, you can see I've got the client at the top, the image, and I've got my language fields, then a definition on the language, and then various fields relating to um, definitions, usage, pronunciation, status, um, all in English. And then I have a couple of those fields that I've mirrored in the other languages. This could be anything I like. It doesn't have to be this way around. I could have made it look like something else. This is just an example. But you can see that it was very simple with a straightforward drag and drop. So now I've done that, what I want to show you is something slightly different. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to delete my images and my spreadsheet. So all I've got is the term base now. And just to show you how it works the other way around, if I come back up in here again to the glossary converter, I click on the settings. This time I check this box, which says use the selected output format for any input format. So I have selected Excel 2007 because I want to convert my term base into a spreadsheet again. But you can see you have a number of different formats that you could use to convert your spreadsheet. And these can be quite useful for a number of things. If, for example, you had terms that were only um, source and target, or if you only wanted to export the terms, maybe I'll show you that in a second, you could convert to a TMX. I'll just show you the, the how to get back to a spreadsheet, first of all. So now all I would do is I drag the SDLTB file, drop it back into here, pick them all up again, I say OK, and that's it. And then when I come back up in here, you can see I've got the media glossary, I sort by date. I've got the media glossary with all my images again, and there's the spreadsheet. And if I double click the spreadsheet, there it is has opened up. It's lost all the colors and things that I had in my nice spreadsheet to begin with, but that's because it's just taken the text, but it's exactly the same. So pretty cool. 
and it's one row per entry. That's the important thing. So synonyms and things are separated with a pipe symbol like this. Makes it easier to manage because if you filter on these, you won't lose the structure of the spreadsheet. So that was one thing. And let me just show you very quickly the TMX idea. So if I was going to a TMX and I click OK, I could drag my, uh, where is it, my, SD, oops, my SDLTB again down here. I drop this in here and it's going to ask me again, but this time, I, I, this time I actually want to ignore probably most of the things because say for example, oops, say for example I just wanted English Welsh, I wonder if I can select them all, okay, and I can no, ignore them. So I only want English to Welsh, all those other fields would be not interesting for me in a TMX. So if I just wanted these two languages for example, I would click OK. That's done. And if I come back up to the top, somewhere I should have now a TMX, and here it is. If you look at it, there's a TMX just in the two languages. So you've just converted a translation memory in a simple drag and drop. And typically, this works the other way around as well. So if I was to drag that back into, if I just rename that file, it's pretty clever this tool. And I just go my TM turn base, come back to the glossary converter, go to my settings, uncheck the box. I'm just going to put that back there because I always forget to do that, just so I remember where I was. Um, and I just drag my TM, TMX file into here. See, it's only picking up the English and Welsh, and when I click on OK, it goes through and does that conversion for me. And now I've just created a turn base with just the two languages from a translation memory file. So it's an amazing little tool. You can do an incredible amount of different conversions with things like that, and it's free. But anyway, that should give you some idea how that works, and I hope that was useful and not too long, although longer than I originally intended. Thank you.